Hello. Kobo Abe, the face of another. A scientist is horrifically disfigured, a laboratory accident. Afraid to reveal his worsening facial scarring, he wraps his head in bandages, but finds his mummified appearances repulses people. He realizes he must create a mask so perfect as to be undetectable. But soon he finds his disguise does more than just hide his scars. He becomes an alternate self who is capable of anything. Narrated through the scientist's notebooks and musings, the face of another is a chilling Kafkaesque horror, exploring identity, transformation, and social ostracism. That is the story in a nutshell. There is a man, a scientist, who is working with various chemicals and we learn that he had his face burned off. Now, there is a word that you're going to need to learn because it's used at least a dozen times in this novel, keloid. Uh, K-E-L-O-I-D. I don't know if it's the translation or if, if that is just the very particular word that needs to be used, but it is when, um, when scarring is quite raised. So those keloid scars are what covers his face. You know, his face has been just blasted off and he's got all the scarring. It's quite horrific. And what drives the novel is his relationship with his wife and how he, it plays on him. He is completely obsessed with his relationship and his love for his wife and how she feels about him, this hideous creature that she is now married to. And he constructs this completely lifelike mask. Perhaps it's hard for us to imagine, but it's a novel, it's fiction. We, we need to make that leap of believability. He creates a rubber plastic celluloid mask to cover his features, it looks completely believable. And so he wants to use this new face of his to see if he can make a connection with his wife. And that's all I can tell you about the plot. Uh, my feelings about this book, Kobo Abe, this is the first novel I've read by him. And he's an interesting character. He grew up in a place that no longer exists. He grew up in a place known as Manchuria, which you will not find on any modern maps. It was the Japanese, how shall I say it, the Japanese controlled area of China for a period of time. He was a pacifist. He did not want to join the army and a way of avoiding that was to go to medical school. His father was a doctor, so I guess that helped. There's a bit of a, a humorous story that he graduated with a medical degree on the condition that he never practice as an actual doctor, which I thought was quite good. He was married. He and his wife, they started an actor training academy. To pay the bills, it is said, apparently, that he went out on the street selling charcoal and pickles, which I thought was just amazing. I love any artist who is willing to do anything. I think there's something very beautiful and honest in that, that art does not pay. And when it does pay, it's probably too late. You, you probably hardly even need it at that point. There's that little period where it, it looks like money, money might be coming in, and then all of a sudden, you don't care about money anymore. But before that, when art is everything and money is a desperate situation and you are prepared to go out there and do anything. You know, I always think about Henry Miller. I may not love this novel, but someone who's willing to go out on the street and sell pickles, yeah, I'll read his books. My feelings about this novel, it is a very slow psychological study. There is not a lot of action. There's a little bit. There's some. There's quite a lot of almost action, but the majority of the novel is a long exploration of a man with no face, a man who creates a face to wear in public, the new personality which begins to appear, surprising to him, of what happens when you wear a face that is not your own and suddenly you find yourself acting differently in public. That is really what the novel is about, is these questions of what does it mean to have a face in society that is the basis for so much judgment about you as a human being and as a character? Like, who 
are you? And if you did not have a face, how would that affect you? And if you didn't have a face and you, you could buy another one to wear, how do you think that might change your personality? So there are a lot of these questions. All of that is by way of saying is that the first half of the novel is quite a lot of wondering about the construction of the face. If I am going to build a mask, what style of a face do I want to construct it as? It was a lot of reading for, please, can we just make the mask and see what happens then and not worry too much about if you have a long nose or a short nose. I would appreciate that if we could get on with the nose and the eyebrows and all of that discussion. And then when he does get the mask, that is him wanting to go out in public to test the mask, going out and doing little chores and seeing how people react to him. And, and that is quite good. It's just that there's a lot of it. He goes to a restaurant to see if he's going to be able to eat and how are the lips going to line up with his muscles and he sees some Korean people, this is in Tokyo, and he's wondering about how do the Korean people with Korean faces, how, how, what is their life like living in, in Japan? And, but they speak Japanese and a lot, I have to stress that, quite a lot of this psychological discussion of what it means to have a face. That is Kobo Abe, The Face of Another. This is the first novel I've read of his. I understand that uh, the Woman of the Dunes is his, you know, the one he's known for. And A Face of Another is, it's well known and appreciated, and as usual, probably because they made a film of it. It is amazing. Like, what kind of longevity novels will get if they have had a film made of them. So just a, a short review today. Do I recommend it? It's quite good. The similarity to Kafka is, is quite apt. Kafka was one of his favorite writers, so there is a lot of that, a lot of the, um, you know, the rumination, oh, what does it mean? What does it mean? Who am I? Where am I in this weird society that I seem to be operating in? Much of that. And it's not bad every now and again. The face of another, uh, I'm a bit 50-50 on this one because I think that perhaps a lot of people may, may not have a lot of experience with Japanese literature. And I would not recommend this one for your first taste of Japanese literature. There are other better novels to get that, yeah, that Japanese feeling. Beauty and Sadness by Yasunari Kawabata. That is a great place to start. This one, hmm, I think you need to be a bit, a bit more comfortable with the sort of the Japanese attitude. Recently, I've been reading a lot of Japanese literature. I, I can't get enough of it. So I, I feel that, you know, I'm, I'm well steeped in the mindset. That's all. Thank you very much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed the video. I tried to make it a bit shorter today because, well, it's a short novel. I don't need to go on and on. Right, Grant's gonna say goodbye now because he's just full of nonsense. <laughs>